My name is Heidi Preeb and I am an ENFP. Welcome to my channel. You may know me from the ENFP survival guide. You may know me from the ENFP soul bootcamp programs. You might just be here because we dated briefly and it didn't work out and you want to hear me repent. Or you might not know me at all, in which case I am very pleased to make your acquaintance on this fine day. I have a feeling that you are here either because you're an ENFP or because you have in some way been burned by an ENFP and you want to figure out what was going on and what was behind that. Everyone is welcome. If you agree with me or disagree with me, I want to hear your point of view, but we're going to talk today about 10 things that ENFPs don't always get right in relationships. Now, not all of these are going to apply to every ENFP, of course. So things like age, maturity, attachment style, personal development work that you may have done over the years are all going to play into these things. So this is not to say that every ENFP does all of these things. It's just to say that having the cognitive functions that we have, which are extroverted intuition, introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, and introverted sensing can predispose us to certain biases in terms of relationships that can make certain areas more difficult for us than for the average person, especially if we're not conscious and aware of those. But without further ado, let's talk about what we tend to get wrong. Mistake number one that ENFPs tend to make in relationships, having an entire relationship inside of your head instead of in real life. And here's what that means. ENFPs and INFPs and ISFPs and ESFPs, any type that uses introverted feeling. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say cognitive functions, you can check out my other videos where I play out what all of these characters inside the ENFPs brain looks like. Or you can also check out my bootcamp course, which runs through what each of these cognitive functions does in your brain and kind of play acts all these scenes with them. So you kind of get an idea um, of exactly how they play out internally for you. It's sort of like the inside out characters inside your own mind. But anyways, Having introverted feeling is this function that is very prone to fantasy. So something that I see a lot of ENFPs getting stuck in is they'll create this entire fantasy of someone inside of their head and have all these ideas about who that person is and what they're like and what they like and dislike and how they're going to impact your life. And then we forget to actually check in with those people in real time and see if those things work for them. Hey, does this relationship that I'm having with you inside of my head resemble who you actually are as a person? And of course you can do it more subtly than that. Um, you can just kind of check in on like, oh, I have an idea that they really like this. Hey, do you like this? And then get some feedback on it. Because we don't have extroverted feeling in our dominant stacking, we can be really bad at checking in with people in real time and getting an idea of who they actually are. So we create these fantasy versions of people inside our heads, and then we get really, really let down or disillusioned when they don't either live up to that or when they have different likes or dislikes than we want them to have, or when they're not exactly as in love with us as we wish they were. And that can be an experience that can break a relationship because if we're only having a relationship with a fantasy of a person, there's nothing real to work with there. So this is something that I see a lot of younger ENFPs getting caught up in. So late teen years, 20s, this is a really, really prevalent thing for ENFPs. A lot of us start to move away from it as we grow up and integrate those inferior functions and learn that, okay, we have to deal with the reality of who someone is. And there's often a lot of grief involved in doing that, which is something that I want to talk about in another video in and of itself. But the more accurate we can force ourselves to be about the people that we're dating, the better chance you have at building a really beautiful and sustainable relationship with them because you're dealing with the reality of who they are, not the idea of who they are. Number two mistake I see ENFPs making in relationships is expecting the honeymoon period to go on forever. And again, this is generally something I see with younger ENFPs, but it's a very, very real problem. So for a while, everything will feel super exciting, super brand new, like we want this feeling to go on forever, and then reality kicks in and we get bored or we get frustrated or we get disillusioned. And a very common thing that I see a lot of ENFPs doing at this point is bailing and going, oh, well, if I'm feeling bored, if I'm feeling disillusioned, if I'm feeling like I'm annoyed or repulsed or rejected by my partner, that's a cue to bounce. No, that's not a cue to leave the relationship necessarily. If it becomes a pervasive problem, then absolutely. But those feelings of boredom, of fatigue, of getting a little bit sick of someone are totally normal and they're just a sign that the honeymoon period is wearing off and it's time to start dealing and integrating the realities of who someone is. That's when real deep love starts to grow and that's something that you don't get in the honeymoon period when everything is beautiful and intense and fresh. You don't get the real parts of someone but it's learning to work with those things and learning to look at the parts of your partner that maybe aren't the easiest for you to face and go I'm going to develop some skills for integrating this, for understanding this, for working with this, that's when you really start to build a partnership with someone that has lasting power. So if you can stick it out past the honeymoon phase and into this phase where you're really deepening your relationship, there's an entire new world of possibilities within that that a lot of ENFPs miss 
because they get out as soon as things stop being easy and fun and exciting and exhilarating. Mistake number three that I see ENFPs making in relationships, leading with feeling and ignoring the realities. So once again, this is a product of underdeveloped TE or SI or inferior functions. So we'll let FI kind of lead the show and go, okay, the only thing that matters is how I feel about someone. And often the way we feel about people is very impractical because we're attracted to unorthodox things. We'll fall for someone who's so different than us or who has a completely different lifestyle than us. And we'll find that very intoxicating and very exciting and we want to explore it. But then once that excitement wears off, we're left with realizing like, oh, what I want for the future doesn't necessarily line up with what this person wants for the future. And that can be a really, really painful thing to deal with when you're like two years into a relationship because two dates in, you didn't look down the line and go, okay, where is this leading? You only looked at the positive possibilities. And that's a great thing that you see so many positive possibilities, but you also have to try to channel a little bit of that introverted intuition that you don't naturally use. I mean, that's something that we do talk a lot about in the boot camps is how to access those shadow functions. So N I F E T I and S E and how to use them in your life in a way that actually helps you get closer to the goals that your N E and F I want, because none of us want to be dealing with these horrible, breakups that just rip our hearts out of our chest because the emotion is there, but the practical parts are not, and we just can't make it work. In university, I remember taking this course on healthy relationships and they threw this stat at us that most married couples, something like 80% or whatever, the reason for their divorce was something they knew about and were worried about within the first 10 days of the relationship, which is crazy. So these gut feelings that we have that, oh, this is gonna be a problem down the line, or I don't know if we can make this work, we have to start listening to those earlier on because they're most often telling us very real information that's gonna become very important later on when we're already a lot more emotionally invested and attached and intertwined with that person. And that's gonna make it really, really hard to leave. Which brings me to relationship mistake number four that ENFPs make, which is that we stay in bad relationships too long because we hold on to these past memories of how good things were and we get obsessively convinced that we can recreate that past. So when you have introverted feeling and introverted sensing in your function stack, your perception of time doesn't work quite the way that it should. So what that means is that you're thinking more about the way things were and your emotional feelings and attachments that you have to the way that things were than you are about how things actually are. I see as dead last in our cognitive stacking. It's our eighth function. So we almost never access it. So we don't do that thing that other people do where we look at the relationship as it is, just the cold hard truth of how it is and assess it through that lens. For people with SE, letting go of a bad relationship feels like letting go of a bad relationship. But for people with FI and SI, letting go of a bad relationship feels like letting go of a good relationship because we live in the past. We only look at how it's been and how it could be. And this can get us stuck in this loop of continuously thinking that we can make something work when we really need to just let it go because it's already gone. Mistake number five that I see ENFPs making in relationships. You expect a relationship to fix your entire life. So as ENFPs, we also have an introverted thinking blind spot. And what introverted thinking is really good at doing is putting things in their proper categories and understanding how things work as a system. When you don't use introverted thinking almost ever, as ENFPs do not, you're not great at putting things in the right categories. So you conflate things a lot and you might go, okay, I'm gonna do this one thing and then it's gonna make everything in my life better, not recognizing that that thing might make like three things in your life better, but you're still gonna have a lot of the same problems that you had before you embarked on that goal. So getting into a happy relationship is often this goal that we have or this thing that comes along and we jump on it and we think it's gonna fix everything. And that's just so unrealistic. Relationships fill a very specific category of your life. So maybe having a romantic relationship means that you have more company and that's great. Maybe it means that your sex life gets more consistent and better and that's a great thing. Maybe it means that now you have someone to plan for the future with and that's a really nice secure feeling but your relationship with someone else is never, ever, 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 ever going to fix a bad relationship with yourself. And that's something that I see a lot of ENFPs doing is we want to outsource the self work that we have to do and go, okay, well, a new job or a new partner or losing weight or whatever it is, will fix everything negative that I feel about myself. And that's never going to happen. So if you're expecting a partner to come along and fundamentally change the way you think about you, you're just setting yourself up for a disaster. But if you can be mindful of what you're hoping a relationship will fix and just notice like that's a thought I'm having. And that's going to point you very specifically in the direction of the work that you really need to do on yourself. So start using those fantasies as kind of a guidepost for what work you need to do. Relationship mistake number six that I see ENFPs doing. Thinking that being self-aware means being interpersonally aware. 
So ENFPs tend to have a very, very deep understanding of what makes them tick because we have introverted feeling. That's a very introspective and very self-aware function. So we can often tell you a lot about ourselves and we think that that understanding applies to other people as well. So we can fall into this trap of thinking that we always intuitively understand what other people need, what other people want from us, what kind of a relationship someone else wants. And once again, this is kind of related to point number one, we forget to check in and actually see what's going on for people in real time. So we can miss really important information about something that's important to our partner because maybe they have a different love language than we have. Maybe they have a different attachment style than we have. Maybe they have a different personality type than we have. Probably they do. And we really need to humble ourselves enough to understand that we don't know everything about other people. There's a lot to learn and we have to be comfortable at dealing with people at face value. So if you're not taking your partner at face value because you think you know them better than they know themselves, you're setting yourself up for a really toxic, manipulative, unhealthy dynamic that's not gonna be good for either of you in the long run. Relationship mistake number seven that I see ENFPs doing taking their fantasies literally instead of using them as guideposts. So if you are an ENFP and you've ever been in a relationship, you know the feeling of waking up one morning, maybe slightly after the honeymoon phase is beginning to wear off and going, oh my God, I'm fantasizing about someone else or there's someone else on my mind or I'm thinking about my ex or whatever it is and going, okay, that must mean that this is the wrong relationship. A lot of the time, having those fantasies are perfectly normal and what they're trying to tell you is what you need more of inside of your own relationship. So instead of going, okay, I need to leave my partner and go pursue this new person who I'm thinking about, think about what you want from that new person or what you wanna feel in a relationship with that new person that's absent from your current relationship and then try to find a way to bring that thing into your current relationship. So maybe there's something that you feel like is lacking in terms of your routine with this person, maybe your sex life with this person, maybe your interpersonal or social environment in relation to this person. And instead of just focusing on this fantasy and thinking you have to go fulfill it to be happy, recognize that you're allowed to want other things in your relationship. You're allowed to ask for things. You're allowed to bring things into your relationship and talk to the other person about what they're comfortable with if it's not something that you're naturally getting out of that relationship. But often we can forget to do that and think we need to go chasing something else when really we could have a lot of what we want within the relationship if we just learn to communicate better, to state what's in our introverted feeling, talk about what we want, what we feel like we're missing, and ask the other person if that's something they can help us get a better grasp of within the relationship. Because very often we'd be pleasantly surprised if we were to do that work. Mistake number eight that I see ENFPs making in relationships, wrapping the relationship up in your personal identity. So introverted feeling naturally personalizes everything. So nothing that happens to us just happens to us. We have to make it this whole story about who we are. And we can get so caught up in how we want the story to go that we forget that life is not a story. Life is a thing that's concretely happening in real time as we're experiencing it. So to have healthy relationships as an ENFP, you have to be willing to separate your identity from the relationship and go, this is not who I am. This is not saying anything about who I am. It's simply saying something about the dynamic between myself and someone else and how we can or can't fit our lives together. And that is so hard to do for anyone because relationships in general are this thing that since the time we're young, we're taught to kind of wrap up in our self-worth and like, oh, if people want you, it means you're good. And if people don't want you, it means you're bad or something's wrong with you. And there's all of this like shame and these disgusting feelings that go along with any sort of rejection or any sort of um, relationship that isn't going well, but you have to be willing to look at those and to separate them from your relationship and go, okay, what am I projecting onto my relationship? Because I'm believing that if my relationship goes this way, it means this thing about me. And where can I start prying those things apart and figuring out, no, this is my shame. This is my sense of failure. This is what's actually happening in the relationship that needs to be dealt with interpersonally. So the more you can figure out what is yours to deal with personally, and what is the relationships that you need to work out with your partner, the better you're gonna get at having healthy relationships because you're finally building a healthy relationship with yourself instead of just projecting all of your perceived flaws and shortcomings onto your relationship. Relationship mistake number nine, and this is a big one for ENFPs, we don't set proper boundaries. This is something I see across the board with friends, with relatives, with romantic relationships for ENFPs. We don't use extroverted feeling as ENFPs. So what does that mean? It means that we aren't naturally good at setting boundaries and figuring out, okay, what's mine, what's yours? What am I supposed to respond to when you ask me to respond to something? Versus when is it comfortable for me to go, I can't be that person for you. I need to kind of put down a boundary here and we need to figure certain things out on our own, or we need to cheer each other on as we do personal work. 
ENFPs really want to be liked, we really want to be supportive, we want to be good friends and good partners and good people. So often what we think that means is just giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and not paying any attention to our own energy and what's going on in that process for us. This is also um, going to differ significantly based on your attachment styles. So people who are either anxious or fearful avoidant are probably going to find that that applies more to them. People who are secure might find that doesn't necessarily apply to them. And then people who are avoidant might find that they actually have too many boundaries around themselves and that they can stand to loosen their boundaries a little bit. But I do often see this as a pattern with ENFPs is thinking, okay, loving someone means always being available to them, always being attentive to their needs and always giving them everything they want. And here's something we can learn from our extroverted feeling friends. FE is not about meeting every single want that a person has. It's only about meeting their needs. So people who use extroverted feeling a lot, so ENFJs, INFJs, ESFJs, ISFJs, tend to be really good at going, okay, Here's where I can meet someone's need and here's where I can empower them to meet their own need. This is something we actually talk a lot about in the ENFP and INFP Soul Bootcamp courses because ENFPs and INFPs are so notoriously bad at figuring out what's a want versus what's a need in terms of other people's expectations for them. So let's say these coffee beans represent your inner resources. So we have things like your time, your energy, your inner peace, and different life lessons that you've acquired along the way that keep you going. Delicious. Now, I'm your friend and I'm having a hard day. Can I have a few coffee beans? Oh. Okay, so why did we do that? It made me feel good. But when we learn to do that, it gets really, really easy to set our boundaries in a place that's comfortable for us, that allows us to keep meeting our own standards for what a good partner or a good friend or a good family member does without completely depleting ourselves in the process and giving away energy and resources that we don't have. Oh, I see. So I have to draw on my own inner resources instead of constructing my entire sense of self-worth around how nice other people think I am? Precisely. Really? I know, it's a lot to take in. Relationship mistake number 10 that I see NFPs making, and you all know this is coming, is that we stop watering the goddamn grass on our side of the fence. And here's the thing, I am not here to tell you that you need to give up everything you want from your life in order to tend endlessly to this relationship that you find boring or understimulating or whatever it is, but I am here to tell you that that's not the only way to have a relationship. So a lot of us, especially those of us like myself who grew up in SJ culture where everything is very linear and very consistent and very long term, there's this association that often happens where we think if something is long term, it means it has to always be the same. And what we forget about is the fact that relationships are supposed to be these dynamic, ever-evolving, ever-changing things that are very interesting and captivating to us as we move through life. You are not the same person today as you will be in 20 years, and your partner is not the same person today that they'll be in 20 years. So avoiding grass is greener syndrome is not just about looking around and going, oh, okay, I think I'd be happier with this person. It's also about realizing that you're assuming a level of stagnancy that is going to develop in your relationship that you have some responsibility over not letting develop. So think about what it is that keeps you engaged with something long-term, whether it's good conversations, good quality time, going on new adventures with your partner, trying out new things sexually, expanding your social networks in a meaningful way together. Think of what keeps things fresh for you and then actively pursue them within your relationship. Let your extroverted intuition come in and help you out here. You don't like watering the grass? Go buy a sprinkler. There are a million different ways to approach a single relationship. And the more you can get yourself thinking about what those ways are, the less likely you are to grow disappointed and bored and frustrated in your relationship because you're taking active measures to not let that happen. I always feel this kind of deep sense of kinship when ENFPs talk about the relationship challenges and I could go so far into depth with all of these 10 problems that I just talked about. But at the end of the day, the beautiful part is that every single one of them has solutions and not solutions that you have to destroy your mental health trying to chase. Real, tangible, exciting solutions that you can use the cognitive functions you already have to start implementing. You are not supposed to be unhappy and weighted down and depressed in your relationships. You're supposed to feel like endless options are expanding within the relationship. And if you can find a way to build expansive options into any relationship that you decide you wanna pursue, that's how it's gonna last. And I wish you all very good luck in getting there. 
And remember that if you wanna work on any of these skills or if you wanna to get to know your own cognitive functions and your relationship challenges and their solutions a little bit better, I do run Soul Bootcamp programs. So these are six week virtual courses for ENFP and INFP personality types where we go over so many of the things that we just talked about in this video in extreme depth. So we pick apart the emotional intelligence system. We talk about how it applies to ENFPs and INFPs and the fantasy lives that they live and creating lives that are both realistic and happy for us, which is the biggest challenge for ENFPs and INFPs in my opinion. So if you wanna know more about that, my website is www.heidiprieb.com and I'll put the link in the description. And if I don't see you there, I will see you again on this channel soon. Good luck.